is full of questions. Will you marry me? Is my arm really on fire? What can we do to answer these questions? Or more importantly, we should ask, can we use a model that will help us figure out what could happen? And when I mean what could happen, I mean, is something on fire or not? Or is a business going to fail or not? Will a campaign be funded or not? These are all things that we may want to know. Will something break? Will something fail? Will something go horribly wrong at any time? Who knows? But we can use models to help answer these questions. So when we start playing around with models, we may immediately think, hey, let's try a linear model. And <clears throat> we're not wrong to think that. But what could run us into a problem is how that response actually fits into our model. We've been using in our models a lot of continuous variables. Those work beautifully for the regular linear model. However, weird things tend to happen when our response is a binary variable, a zero one, a no yes, an on or off. When that's the case, we are no longer modeling a continuous outcome. Not exactly. Anyway. Instead of what we can model, is the probability of something happening. What is the probability that this fire is ever gonna go out? Probably pretty close to one. What's the probability that anything is gonna be successful? This is where we can start to use generalized linear models. And for these particular kinds of models, we're gonna use one particular kind of generalized linear model. When our response is a binary variable, we could use a logistic regression model. But the logistic regression model works a little bit differently than other models. Because of that binary nature, we need to model something a little bit different. We need to model the probability. Right? So where we get uh, kind of some neat things that will happen is the particular distribution that we're going to use. So instead of using some kind of continuous distribution, uh, we will use the binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution works very, very nicely. And when I said continuous, I'm sorry, I meant to say the normal distribution. We'll use the binomial distribution. So a big question is going to be how does that binomial distribution work with probability? And that's where the real question lies. Because at the end of the day, we want to be able to map our model back to some kind of continuous space. The problem is though, that probability by itself, while it is kind of continuously in nature, it's bound, right? What's it bound by? Zero and one. So how do you think a linear line would fit through that? Eh, probably not very well. Right? So if you think about that typical linear regression line with a continuous variable, the assumption is that it is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Probability doesn't get that, uh, doesn't, doesn't get that again because it's bound. So with that binding from zero to one, we need to do some conversion. In the notes, you saw that conversion process take place from probability to odds and then to log odds. That will give us that appropriate scale. But how that happens is the magic of the generalized linear model. Because the generalized linear model is so good at taking those kinds of weird distributions and getting them back to some kind of continuous space, it needs something to do that work. And it does that through the length function. So every potential distribution has some kind of canonical length function. Right? So the binomial distribution its canonical link function is the logistic link. So in just a few minutes, I'm gonna to try to find something to write on. Maybe take care of some of this stuff on my arm. It's probably ran its course at this point. So when I find that writing utensil, I'll come back and I will give you a really quick demonstration of how that particular link function, the logistic link function works. And I will be back very soon. <laughs> Sorry, the 
so long to get back to you, but I'm here now. So the big thing that we have to kind of consider here is that we have a difference between our normal linear regression model when we're talking about this logistic regression model. So let's take a look at this. In a normal linear model, we may have something like this, a really nice linear line here. Look at that, that's beautiful, very linear. So one thing that we would remember here is that for every unit increase in our x, we're going to get some unit increase in y. And for every unit increase in x, it's going to be the same unit increase for y. So no matter where we are, it's going to be pretty even all the way through here. So no matter where we are, a unit increase in x is a unit increase in y, no matter where we are. Great, right? We, that makes some sense. The logistic regression, though, remember that our big goal is to get some kind of probability value out of the end. So a, a, prob about, a probability of moving from zero to one. Whatever your zero is, whatever your one is, it's the probability of moving from zero to one. So if you have a predicted probability at the end of the model that would be you know, 0.7, then you have a probability of 0.7 of being a one, right? So that's, that's, it's just the probability of moving from zero to one. And this is kind of what it's gonna look like. Right? So we have our X and our Y, right? Here's probability, right? We know that probability is bound by zero and one. Excellent. But here's kind of a, an interesting thing, right? Our logistic regression model is going to fit a logistic curve to this. Okay, great. That's, I think we can kind of see that. Yeah, a little bit, it's a little hard to see. But here's where this gets a little bit different. Okay, let me, let me mark this in a little bit better here. Oh, that's much better. Oh, that's great, beautiful. So that's something very much like a, log a, a logistic curve. So in a logistic regression model, it's a little bit different here because whereas up here we have equal spaces, right? A one unit increase is a one unit increase. It kind of is the same for our logistic regression model, right? So here, through here, through here, and maybe through here. Right? Let's say those are all roughly equal in size. But what happens, and maybe this one too, but here's what happens. Remember that probability is bound by zero and one. We can't exceed those. So we get to the point where as we start getting out to the upper and lower part of our X variable, that a move in that direction has less meaning. So let's take a look what that means. So as we start getting to this upper part of probability, these lines start getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because no matter what, however you, much you move out here, it doesn't matter because you can't really get any more probable than one. And the same would go for zero. Right? As you get closer to this zero probability, these lines become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So this part of the distribution, or this part of the curve, right, you could say that it looks, it almost looks linear if you just look at that, that middle part of it. But these ends are where some, some of the neat stuff happens. And because you cannot exceed those, then, right, you, you, you have to slow down what you're doing on your x-axis. So one thing to kind of consider with this are some kind of interesting properties that the logistic regression has. And that is really, uh, think about this, you probably don't want to ever really get a probability of zero or one. Um, and you may think, well, why not? Wouldn't that be nice to have some perfect prediction? Well, maybe, um, but it usually is an indication that there's something going on within your model, it's something called separation. So let me give you a quick, uh, a, qu a real quick look at what that may, may be. 
So let me let me erase my beautiful board here. All right. So if we have a variable. Just call this zero, one down here. Variable that's kind of like this, right? Those are a bunch of dots there. You can see them, no doubt. And then this, right? Something like that. You can see there that this range of values is sitting squarely in zero and one. There's some point here that clearly breaks off zero and one. So you know that if you have a point in which uh, a part of your x variable, once you get over that point, then it's always going to be a one or always going to be a zero. That's called separation, perfect separation. And when you have separation in a logistic regression model, you may think that it would be a good thing, right? You may think it's like, well, no, that's a, it's a perfect predictor. Well, again, this model can't have a perfect predictor. So if it sees this perfect predictor, it's kind of a clear indication that something is going on. And you'll know when you see it in your regression model because horrible things will be happening. Uh, like I said before, you'll want to always look at your coefficients. So it's worth remembering in the notes that when we're talking about these logistic regression coefficients, what is reported to you would be the log odds. So if you exponentiate those log odds to go back to normal odds ratios, then you're going to see some really, really peculiar values shake out of those. If you see such peculiar values, it doesn't matter whether it's significant or not. It just as a, as a hint, it won't be significant. It will be some huge uh, value for your odds ratio, but still not significant, which again would indicate there's a clear separation problem somewhere within your model. So it's always a really good idea before you start diving into logistic regression to do a little bit of visual exploration. If you visualize this a little bit better, or not better, but if you visualize it first, you can kind of circumvent some of those separation problems by knowing what variables are going into your model. If you see a point in which everything just breaks and jumps to from zero to one, and there's a clear break there, then it's a very uh, obvious indication that there will be separation in your model, and you should probably avoid using that variable. So logistic regression is something that will take a little bit of time to get used to. It will um, certainly be a useful tool, though, for you uh, as you move forward. Uh, there's lots of problems that we would encounter where we want to predict uh, one of two outcomes, and having this tool to do it for us gives us a lot of power to not only make the predictions, but explain why that prediction happened. So uh, again, just one to, one to keep in mind and one to work through. Until next time. <laughs>